Um, well, good evening, everybody. It is 6.30 on Monday, September 25th, 2023, uh, and I call this meeting of the Burlington Housing Board of Review to order. My name is Betsy McGavisk. I am the chair of this board. The other board members present here are Olivia Taylor, Evan Litwin, Josh Ronsky, and also present is Lisa Jones, who is the clerk for the board. This evening, we have two cases on the agenda, which we will hear in the order that they appear. Um, the third case, I believe, on the agenda has been settled in advance. Each hearing is going to proceed in an orderly fashion. So when I call each case, uh, you may come forward and have a seat at this table along with any witnesses. If, if there's room, we're also able to do any configuring, but I don't think we'll, that'll be necessary. Um, we will also include anybody who is joining virtually into a virtual hearing um, so that they can participate as well. Our hearings are recorded, so it is important to speak slowly and clearly and to not interrupt or talk over someone else when they are speaking. Um, like I said, we have two cases on the agenda for tonight. Both will begin with a swearing in, uh, confirming any basic information, and then at that point, I will turn things over to each party for a brief opening statement. Um, and then at that point, board members will ask any questions necessary for their decision making on the case for tonight. Each party is going to be given a full opportunity to be heard, including by testifying on their own behalf, calling witnesses, and introducing evidence in support of their case, and posing challenges to the testimony and evidence presented by the opposing party. Um, we request that any Anything said is not directed to members of the opposing party, but instead directed to members of the board. If we find it's relevant, we will rephrase the question and then ask it to the opposing party. Um, any documents you want submitted into evidence must be provided to the clerk who will enter them into the record. So with that brief introduction, um, I'm gonna call up the first case, which is involving 184 Church Street Certificate of Compliance case brought forward by DPI involving Sisters and Brothers Investment Group, which is owned by Matt and Joseph Handy. So, um, Cynthia, I see that you have your hand raised. Uh, generally, if anybody is involved in this case, we ask that they raise their hand so that they can be led into this room. Um, do other board members want to see if there's a question here from Cynthia? Okay. Lisa, would you be able to unmute Cynthia? Hi, Cynthia, we've brought you, I saw that your hand was raised, we brought you into the virtual meeting. Um, if you have any questions. Okay. Well, seeing that Cynthia may not actually have a question, we are going to ask that if you were involved in the case in, uh, regarding 184 Church Street. Oh, Cynthia, go ahead. Yeah. I raised my hand earlier just to make sure that the Wyatt Garrett Lawrence Hill case is, is, was canceled for this evening. Oh, okay. Great. Thank you for letting us know. So that's, this is the only case then on the agenda for tonight. Thank you. No, no. Is, oh. is, I'm asking if that was, if that was the one that was canceled. Is that the first no. one for that? No, that's no. the second one. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Is there anybody else in the Zoom room who is here for this case? Hi, uh, yes, uh, Kim Sturdivant um, from the city attorney's office. Hi, Kim. I am here for this case. Um, I also, um, attorney Brian here who represents the Handys is also was trying to get in by phone. I'm gonna double check with him to make sure he's got the accurate. The it looks like Brian is in the Zoom, so we can let him in as well. Brian okay. here, right under Cynthia. And we'll do introductions and, and swear everybody in soon. Just right now, we're making sure that we have all parties and all people that need to, to be in the room here. Um, so if there's anybody else involved, please raise your hand. If not, I will move us along to getting sworn in. Um, seeing none. Kim, since you've already started, how about we start with you and then we'll move on to Brian. And what I'm gonna ask is that you say your name, identify yourself for the record, um, and how you'd like to be referred to during this meeting. So for example, my name is Betsy McGavisk. I'm the chair of this board. I use she, her pronouns. You can call me Betsy. Um, and then I'll have everybody swear in. 
So Kim, want to go for it? Yes, thank you. Uh, so Kim Sturdivant, um, Director of Litigation in the Burlington City Attorney's Office, um, representing the uh, Department of Permanent Inspections, uh, Bill Ward in this matter. Okay. Um, I, I will let Bill, and Kim is fine. Um, I will let uh, Brian here also speak to, we believe we have a, uh, an agreement to work that we're working through for this property. Um, okay. Requesting, Great. Uh, board to, you know, well, I'll let Brian. Yeah, we can get into that. I just want to make sure everybody is introduced and sworn in, and then we can we can get into that. But thanks, Kim. Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Brian, if you don't mind introducing hey, yourself. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, Kim is correct. We have the outline of uh, so, the agreement. Brian, we'll, we'll get into that in just a few moments. If you don't just mind just stating your name um, for the record, we'll swear everybody in and then we'll start taking testimony um, on whatever agreement is being worked out. Well, I'm a lawyer, so I'm not testifying. I'm just summarizing the uh, outline of the agreement. Okay. Um, well, you, my name is Brian here and I'm the attorney for the owners of 184 Church Street. Thank you, Brian. And yeah. then... Bill? I'm Bill Ward and I'm the Director of Permitting and Inspections. I use he, him pronouns. Thanks, Bill. Okay, so wherever you are, if you don't mind raising your right hand, and do you swear under the pains and penalties of perjury that the testimony and evidence that you're about to provide in the case under consideration shall be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay. Um, Kim and Brian? I'm not testifying as a witness. I'm not testifying as witnesses. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, well, with that, we can start with opening statements. Um, Kim and or Brian, I don't know if either of you would like to start and explain what's been going on or, or the agreement that you've reached and, and what you're bringing to the board. I don't mind if it's one or the other of you that starts. Kim, how about you start? Sure. So um, the parties are working on a, a tentative agreement. We, well, we've got a tentative agreement. Uh, what we're coming to the board tonight is um, with a request to, you know, uh, postpone, continue to date certain these proceedings to allow us to get that um, agreement finalized and um, and then bring that back to the board for their order. Um, but the, the, the agreement itself, and Brian, are you comfortable with me outlining the terms or generally outlining the terms? Yes, of course. Great, thank you. Um, so basically, um, the agreement will allow the parties to move forward um, to ultimately get the property vacated and um, then allow it to be renovated while it's vacate, vacated. Okay. And what is the timeline for that? So um, currently there, there are 17 units in this building. Um, currently five are vacant. Three are under eviction process. Um, eight of the nine remaining will be vacated within the next 30 days. Um, there is one tenant that um, is not had it indicated apparently that voluntarily would, would vacate, but will now, um, if they don't voluntarily vacate, will be served with an eviction notice uh, by October 2nd. Okay. And during this time frame there will also be um, further you know management provisions put on the property um, to help secure it more okay um, and then what is your ideal timeline then for the board to hear this order uh, two weeks which I understand falls on the holiday, so it would be um, October 10th. Okay. 
Can I ask why two weeks is necessary if it sounds like you're quite close to an agreement? What is the sticking point? Well, during that time frame, there will be other documents that will be drawn up, like a management plan and such. So we want to make sure to give time to um, be able to have all that included. When was the first meeting that the two of you had to discuss a tentative plan? Today. And can I ask why that only happened today and not when this was warned? Does anybody, Brian or Kim, want to address that? It, it, the city was receptive to sitting down and discussing it when we were approached to. So. And when was when were you approached, Kim? Uh, today. So, attorney here, can you address why that the city was only approached today with your request? Uh, settlements frequently happen uh, on the eve of a hearing or a trial. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Um, I would like to ask some questions of Bill. Mm -hmm. So does, I guess based on the evidence that you've already provided, it sounds like, and it, it seemed like the case was that there is um, some very real health and safety concerns at this property. And so Do you have any concerns regarding waiting an additional two weeks in order to hear this case and potentially make an order? I don't because I was personally involved in this afternoon's negotiations with the city attorney representing me. I feel confident by that time we will, we will have already seen some evidence of good faith efforts that the property owner's attorney had shared were happening over the next week to 10 days. So with those assurances, I feel comfortable that this is an appropriate plan and probably gets me to a place where I feel more comfortable faster than if it had gone through a potential board hearing and then a subsequent appeal. Yeah. Uh, if one party or the other was not satisfied with the board decision, um, it could have gone much longer. So I think this expedites the ultimate um, safety for the people who are in the building, which has been my priority from the first inspection. So I, I, I'm in agreement that this is not only acceptable, but preferable, in my opinion. Um, it sounds like, Bill, that, so based on what Kim was saying, that three folks are under the eviction process, which I know can be um, time consuming, and that there's eight more within 30 days, potentially, and another tenant possible that's going to have to start an eviction process. So um, do you have any concerns about, you know, leaving folks in uh, for what could be a quite, long, quite a bit longer in that property than um, anyone would necessarily want if there are health and safety concerns? So, um, you know, is there a relocation plan or what would you do if this even with the agreement this lasted for potentially months so the the people that would be vacating within the next 30 days are the people that we were trying to expedite through this hearing process uh, the people who were in eviction are effectively asking for court relief to stay in the building so that's not my place. It's for a superior court judge to make that decision, and I feel comfortable that with what the city attorney had negotiated with the property owner's attorney, there is or will be a management plan that we will have reviewed and approved so that I can work with my counterparts at both the fire department, the fire chief is here tonight. Um, you know, you had letters from the police chief and fire chief and the superior court about their concerns. Um, I feel like this is a faster way to bring some resolution to this and that that property management plan that we would review 
will have that assurance that the people that remain in there are not causing more problems for themselves, that's, that's not being regulated by someone, and then overseen by city staff. So there are uh, appropriate measures for checks and balances, in my opinion. And could you explain uh, if, yeah, could you just explain the, the tenants who are seeking, I, I can't remember the language you use, court order approval to, in order to be able to stay? Um, could you just explain a bit more what, what that means for me? So they are, the property owner prior to our actions mm -hmm. had been noti noticed by the property owner that they were under eviction. Got it. So that would supersede my actions because a judge is going to make a decision about that okay. so to that extent I was just paraphrasing that that's them upholding their ability to get legal counsel and say I'm asking that the court say I should be able to stay here that's going to be for a judge to decide to decide in my opinion my job is to see that the building meets the minimum housing code that's what these next steps will do provide some measure of safety for people to make repairs where they can be and for our management plan to see that those people who remain in the building don't make matters worse. And so I have a question on the tentative management plan for Kim and or Brian, um, or Bill, if you're, if you're able to chime in. But something that is in Article 1820, that if we have a hearing that this board will be um, beholden to, is that the property owner will be responsible for any relocation costs of tenants that are forced to move as a result of um, needing to make these repairs. Could you share if there is any anything currently in the management plan to ensure that you know tenants who are not already under the eviction eviction process are going to be receiving relocation services or, or funds during the interim we haven't written a management plan yet is that your intention to include in the management plan pardon me is that your is it your intention to include language around relocation costs in the management plan those, yes, those eight tenants are actively uh, being re relocated. There are units available for them, and the owner is facilitating their relocation. But yeah, we will reference that in the management plan, of course. And should we try and reschedule this hearing for any date less than two weeks away from now? So say one week away from now? Um, two weeks away, please. Okay. Um, but if we were to schedule it for one week from now, what would, where would the status of um, your agreement or your order be? It wouldn't be complete. Kim, is that your understanding as well? Um, I, I mean, we would work on it as soon as we can, but um, I think two weeks gives sufficient time for it to actually, you know, to make sure it, it can get through the, both parties and, and be acceptable. Just in, yeah. So do other board members have questions for any of the parties here? No, I, I could go for a vote on the uh, request for continuance. Josh? Well, yeah, I would just ask for the folks um, currently under eviction orders, presuming that they, you know, you were saying they're currently in front of Superior Court, right? Um, so if Superior Court finds that they are not subject to eviction, how would that play into the management plan? Anyone speak to that? 
I would say since the management plan's not written, it yeah. would need to be written into that. Mm -hmm. And that's where I think, from my perspective, allowing the property owner's attorney to work with them to have the few days to complete that, we had these discussions earlier today, it's not unreasonable for them to, if they're providing it to us by the end of this week, I'm certain there will be, given this afternoon's back and forth, there may be some back and forth in that as well. I think it would be appropriate. And I will say it may be harder to reach next week. I'm out of state next week uh, at a conference. It's not that I couldn't log in remotely, mm -hmm. but it would be a little bit more challenging for me to have documentation and so forth as easily as if I was here in person next week. But I would be back in state um, as of the 9th and uh, 10th for a hearing. And so to clarify for our procedural purposes, the 10th has been scheduled as a virtual meeting already. Um, is the, would be a let, I guess what's the reason for that? Moved into the yeah, meeting. yeah, I, to I totally get that. But why is that a virtual? Like, are you not going to be here, Lisa? Oh, is that why oh, it's a virtual meeting? Because I couldn't find space. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Um, I don't want to push it out further, but I do think that it would benefit us to have this rescheduled hearing in person if we are going to especially if we're going to push it out two weeks. Um, I don't know how we can check in on the availability of, of the 11th for a meeting space. But is this something that we need to decide right now, Lisa? Well, I wouldn't know what rooms are okay. available. I mean, I think that... So I think the gotcha. meeting could be held virtually, okay. should it be necessary. Um, there are plenty of parties that could have been here this evening that have not come. So um, I don't see why we couldn't keep it as a virtual meeting, yeah. should we need to reschedule. And um, so I, you know, if you're comfortable um, with that, we could go to a vote on whether or not, a discussion and vote on whether or not to, um, accept or to decline the request to continue the case. Unless anybody has more things we want to discuss. I don't think I need any more information from, from the parties here. Um, I do have a, another procedural question, which is if we do make a vote to uh, around continuance, do we need to determine the, the date right now or is that something we could determine in executive session with an order? this be moved to a time certain, date certain, and that you at least have one meeting location identified, even if that is an online location, okay. um, to, so that the hearing doesn't have to go through the process of being rewarned and reposted at the property by bill. Okay. So this vote should include the time and date and place. Okay, great. Um, do I need to do a motion to move us into like any type of further discussion on this? I feel like we've already been discussing, but. I think a point of process would be that the chair could entertain a motion to continue this hearing to a uh, date, time, and location certain, which is the pleasure of the motion maker. Okay. Um, is anybody interested in making a motion for a date and time for a continued meeting? Um, I will make a motion to um, for us to consider whether or not um, to vote yes or no on the continuance and mm -hmm. set the date and time right now and for us to discuss it now. Okay, so a motion for discussion. No motion for vote. And, there's, and then vote. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Do I have a second? Second. Great. All in favor? For discussing? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. I <laughs> Um, so I would vote to uh, accept based on the testimony of Director Ward, particularly I think if Director Ward is comfortable with 
um, with a two week wait, which was my initial concern regarding health and safety issues, then I'm inclined to trust his um, judgment on that. Uh, and I would move that we accept the continuance until October 10th at 6.30 during our normal meeting time, which would be virtual only. Um, and should the parties come to an agreement before then, um, which would be ideal, then um, we do not have to have that. We can cancel that on the agenda. So, uh, so that's my motion to postpone until October 10th at 6.30 for the virtual meeting. Okay. Can I ask or amend that we move it to 6 p.m. earlier in case? We can set any, I mean, has this meeting been warned, Lisa? So well, we would no, have no, to re it. Um, it has not been warned Warned to the okay. public. Okay. okay, so we could move it to six. If that is that, helpful I would to you, that I would do that. Motion and amend that we meet earlier that day. Does that work for the two of you? Or what are you thinking? Are you inclined yeah. to support this? So, you know, my concern is that you know, it seems like the conversation has just begun today. Um, and I appreciate that it sounds like the parties are moving quickly towards an agreement. I am concerned that there's no, there, it sounds like there has not been any conversation on the management plan. So I do worry that in two weeks, you know, we're gonna come back and there's not gonna have been an agreement. Um, and then we're two weeks out from, you know, everything that Bill Ward has said um, that we're still third than 30 days plus out from actually implementing an order. But I guess I'm open to, so that's my concern, and I guess I'm torn on it, but I'm also open to going along with the board um, if that's where everyone else is at. I think ultimately um, the concern you have, which I sh share to a degree, um, is that there's already quite a few process people that are already in yeah. judicial processes mm -hmm. and so I'm not really confident that extending two weeks is really going to have a big mm -hmm. uh, difference and um, Director Ward's not in town next week mm -hmm. and he would be it would be very important to have him here mm -hmm. although he could rem he did say he would be remote and the, the two parties have said that they don't the city has also said that they don't feel that they could come to a management plan in an agreement within two weeks. Mm -hmm. So I think um, by the, for that regard, I would you know, ask you to consider to support my vote to extend for two mm -hmm. weeks until 6 p.m., which is uh, Olivia's request. Yeah. yeah, I don't have anything to add. I'm comfortable with it. Okay, so all in favor? Yeah, do we have a... Do we, do we I have a motion for October 10th at 6 p.m., uh, virtual hearing, and all parties should be present virtually should they not come to an agreement before then. Great. Um, all... Or do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Great. Unanimous. You have your extension. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night, gang. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Thanks Kim. Thanks, Bill. Hey, thank you. See y'all in a couple weeks. Um. Um, so you don't, do you want to, do you know if the people are here for the third piece? Um, They're not physically here, but I do are they not see here? Wyatt or Lauren. Well, Cynthia asked about it, so. Yeah. Right, of the tenants. And I think Cynthia's the respondent, correct? And Jason is also. Yes. Hi, if you're here for the. The third case, Wyatt, Garrett, Lauren, Shalel, Jason, Siler, and Cynthia Warwick. Could you raise your hand? Cynthia, are you the, um, you can unmute yourself. Uh, are you the landlord or the tenant party? Landlord. Okay, thank you. And Wyatt or Lauren? 
have attendants present on Zoom or in the room. So okay. um, if the parties aren't here, I feel that they've had ample amount of time to arrive. So I would ask our chair to move us into executive session. Um, and of course, the standard caveat of if there was a good reason for the parties not to be here and we validate that reason, then we could reschedule it. Yeah. So Cynthia and Jason, we will reach out to Wyatt and Lauren to see if there is a um, justifiable reason for them not making it here tonight, in which case we will reschedule. Uh, if not, we usually consider a case dropped if the petitioners have not arrived within 15 minutes of, of the meeting. Oh. We were muted. We were muted? Yeah, I don't know how, but we saw that. We were Weird. Muted. Um, so we will reach out to the tenants to see if there is a justifiable reason for them to not be here tonight. Uh, we usually give parties 15 minutes to show up and then consider the case from the petitioner dropped if that has not happened. So seeing that they're still not here and it's 30, 30 minutes past the start of the meeting, um, we will consider it dropped unless heard otherwise. So I'm willing to find. A clerk of the board should be in touch with you pretty quickly. Um, Lisa, how long does that would that take you? To, just until you make contact with the or attempt to make contact with the tenants, I guess. Yeah, a few days. Have you received anything from them, Lisa? No. So, um, Cynthia, have you received email communication from the clerk yet, Lisa Jones? No. Okay. Have you emailed them before, or do you email her? Well, she emailed me. Okay, so Cynthia, the clerk will respond back to you. Within? A few days. Yeah, a few days, too. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I had emailed her um, photos, um, receipt of notification, return to deposit, copy. Great. Yep, and I am seeing those things in um, the folder, so if it gets rescheduled, those will be put to use, but if not, um, thanks, thanks anyways for taking the time. Okay, I just I have another quick question. I also mailed out a packet of photos and I was wondering if you got them. Yes, we did. We received okay. them on the 27th. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're all set then. Thank you very much. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Have a good night. Right, bye-bye. Okay, so with that, I think I adjourned this meeting. Mm -hmm. And we will move into executive session. 703. At 703. For the record. Wow. For the record. <laughs>